Priority One Fishing here. We're on the banks of the Snake River in Idaho, chasing down some big sturgeon, some dinosaurs. Very big sturgeon. <laughs> Very big. Mine. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to show you guys a little bit of uh, some tips on how to cast a surf rod, which is what we like to use, and I think Brian will kind of explain uh, why that is the case. You bet. We've done a couple of videos showing you the mort, showing you the rigging, showing you a brief picture of the surf rod, but we can't get this in frame because it's like 15 feet tall. We're almost touching the telephone wires up here. So, <laughs> so surf rods, surf casting. Now, leverage, a uh, big factor on this for fighting the fish, but also for casting and controlling the bait present it to where we need to to get it to those fish. Uh, we do this with a lot of other different techniques with other species too, like, uh, well, dead baiting for pike is an example Cat of one. Fish, Catfish, stuff like that. You bet. A lot of the gear we use, uh, a lot of people think it is overkill for that, but we're fishing more the environment than we are the fish itself. Uh, getting it to the fish, presenting it correctly is the number one thing you need to do first. The depth, the speed, uh, that profile, the bait that you're presenting, of course. So surf casting. We're going to talk about surf casting here in just a moment. Uh, uh, see if we can show you a couple of these casts here. Cut over to some, some of these videos we did to show you what it looks like in motion on a full uh, surf cast. There's quite an art to it, uh, would you say, Ian? I mean, uh, I mean, surf casting it takes a lot of energy. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not, by no means an expert, um, but it's it's all about kind of leverage. Um, you know, you have those long rods. You let them do the work. However, you gotta you gotta get it into the right position to allow it to do the work. So uh, typically, you'll see in this video here, uh, what I like to do is re reach back that last little bit once I have a good strong footing reach back and kind of extend that last little bit of your arm. Um, I guess I should mention before that, uh, kind of the length off the end of the rod. Um, I prefer about uh, you know six to 12 inches roughly hanging off, enough to get a little bit of a whip, but you don't want it so much that it's dragging the ground behind you. Mm -hmm. So get a good footing, reach back that last little bit, and then you're gonna kind of swivel at, uh, at the hips, um, but also kind of bring those arms around, bring it up, and you're gonna wanna stop short of what you think you want to do. You're gonna wanna stop kind of right at the top of that cast let that inertia carry it out and then slowly let the rod kind of fall forward as that inertia is taking uh, the rest of the, the gear uh, off of the reel and you kind of maximize your cast that way. Yeah, let's show you this other clip here real quick. We're going to run one in a little bit slower motion than the ones you just saw. Um, that clip is going to show that extension. That's a big factor on that. That extension gives you that energy. Um, another important factor we didn't talk about is choosing the right rod. Choosing a rod that has a good balance of weight, but lightweight. Something you can really throw quickly. It's the motion and the stop that actually transfers that energy from the tip of the pole into your presentation to be able to get that distance. So that's some of the basics of surf casting. Hopefully it helps you out. Um, not necessarily a wrong way to do it. Get a surf rod in your hand, give it a shot. I bet you'll enjoy it.